Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Mini Urban Farm. My name is Veronica and it is time for our May garden tour. All right, there is lots of stuff going on in the garden. We have been harvesting a ton um, and we've had some setbacks, all right, this month in the garden, specifically this month. Um, so I will share with you what's going on and you know what has um, needed a little bit of tweaking or what mishaps we had. Let's go. So this is our May garden. You can see how lush it is, all right? Um, specifically, you can also tell that there's kind of like this lapse in the fence because we have some squash growing on that. I will show you in just a minute here. Um, and we have some things kind of wilted, which is not normal for mid-May, all right? So we're gonna talk about that too. Now I'm gonna start over here, all right? <laughs> I'm sorry for the sun glare, but I'm gonna start over on this side, which is where our tomato plant was all right that last month I think it was you guys saw me harvest a ton from this one little plant now this is all one plant it is definitely on its way out all right which is unusual for mid-may um, but this is actually um, on its way out and you can see like how crispy and stuff this is it's on its way out for two reasons all right the first of which is that it's actually um, more um, seasons and it should be at this point all right I planted this last season um, and it overwintered itself didn't give off any tomatoes and then all of a sudden it came you know right back in um, in spring and now we have tons of tomatoes now you guys saw me harvest a whole bunch last season I am gonna harvest a whole um, oops and I just pulled that one off um, I'm gonna harvest some more of them um, now that oh no Oh, and here we go. This is probably also why it's on its way out. Look at that giant hole made by, I think, probably a cutworm. All right. We've had a little bit more press pressure. I can see some of these also, right? These little holes in here. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but I'm going to try to get some of these red ones off. Um, I have not been doing a super good job of harvesting everything you know that's starting to be red as you can see um, I explained in my last video that as soon as things start to blush I tend to come and like pick them off so we don't get you know things like this all right um, and try to just you know give me some more time and then just let them ripen themselves on the countertop although sometimes this does happen you know where they're green and they're still getting this kind of you know stuff in them um, the holes in the the little eaten chewed up parts also um, but for the most part I haven't really been doing a lot of picking of these tomatoes and that is because we've had some other family issues in the past couple months now I shared um, back in like December January that my dad actually ended up having a stroke um, and apparently it's very common if you've had one stroke to then have a repeat stroke a few months later and unfortunately that's exactly what happened a few weeks ago um, right before my sister's wedding actually we um, we noticed my dad's um, speech was really slurred and it turned out that he had another stroke so um, thankfully he's okay it wasn't nearly as bad as the first one and also thank you guys to everyone who you know reached out to make sure everything was fine um, I really appreciate that but you know this one wasn't nearly as bad however I have been taking a little bit of a you know time out from the garden which is why you can see you know things are kind of like toppling over although I will say the garden has been doing pretty well all right with the exception of some of these pests, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, like everything has been doing really well for neglecting the garden a little bit. So I can't complain too much. Now, the second reason that um, the tomatoes are kind of wilting and some of the other things in the garden are kind of wilting is because of this timer. All right. And I will say there's nothing wrong with this timer. I absolutely love this timer. I actually bought another one for the food forest. Um, so I have this one over here, which does the garden and then this one for the lawn, right? This is hooked up to like another little sprinkler that does lawn. Um, but actually in the midst of everything, one of the kids was out here washing their hands. Um, they kind of like removed some of this stuff put it back together and then they actually turned off this main faucet all right so this is actually what controls the entire water supply we you know we can turn it off but we always leave it all the way on all right because of these two things on the timers all right so this tends to control it without a problem but then without this main water supply being fully opened you know as much as it's on the timer it cannot run so it was maybe like a good week all right before i noticed that this was not running right because this was still doing everything it was supposed to but i didn't notice 
that all of my plants in here right because you know tomatoes for example they don't need watering every single day um, but a lot of the beans also right they st somewhat started to wilt and I didn't notice it until a few days had gone by um, and then I specifically noticed it the most you can see my little sunflowers here I specifically noticed it the most on some of these herbs right because this usually is not what my parsley looks like and it's like all dry and crumbly and then I was like, wait a minute, you know, let me look at the soil, um, which is honestly something that you should be doing every single day is just sticking your hands into the soil. Um, but my little herb patch over here is definitely much more thin um, than it was last month. Some of my, you know, some of my herbs did survive, but for the most part, this was completely full of herbs and now it's not. So definitely a good reason to be checking your garden on a regular basis and making sure, you know, that you're checking the watering all the time. Now I will come through and kind of just like pick off all of these, you know, tomatoes, especially the ones that are touching the soil. Um, and I will say like these are pretty good still, so I won't, you know, I won't complain too much on the little leaves on them from the soil and stuff. But for the most part, we still have, you know, a good, um, a good amount of tomatoes. And from the last time that we harvested, we have harvested significantly um, more. All right. So it's been, you know, several rounds since you guys saw it um, that we've still been able to harvest. So I can't complain about this one little plant overall. Um, and then I haven't done too much of like filling out this space, but these are actually little Roma tomato plants and just come through and you know help it to pollinate itself all right and these are doing really well as well um when they start leaning over a little bit i can probably tie them to this stay here um the same thing with the back one here um, i haven't needed to yet so i've just kind of been letting them do their own thing um and they're they're doing pretty well so hopefully we'll get some tomatoes off of this sometime soon i did come through and plant out some um some oregano right so all of this oregano has been taking off i can't remember if i actually had planted out during last time but it's kind of like working itself back in right this is one plant and that's um, that's another plant so it's definitely taken off um, and it does tend to root itself like if you push it back into the soil like this it will root itself um, when it stays in the soil it'll root itself but we've gotten a lot of good really pretty green growth off of this oregano and even just touching it like i can smell how fragrant it is um, so this has been doing really well if you're wondering what this is these are actually um like the remnants of my broccoli i kind of just like cut them out of the soil and left them to decay in the soil um so that has been really good like leaving the material to decompose um the same as that like this is like much more decomposed at this point but all of this adds organic matter back into the soil and then right next to it this little squash plant is actually starting to take off all right and i'm gonna yeah i think i'll probably harvest this one already because i can see it already you know decent size let's see if i can twist that off um but we have gotten a few of these even though the plants are little we're getting some good squash um i know that we have another one on the other side but yeah i'll wash this off and we can add this to a salad or something that's a good addition to our summer salads or on the grill or something um, and then you can see we have some flowers um, this one hasn't flowered nearly as much as the other squashes I have but you know I can't complain this is like a tiny little plant so far and it doesn't get as much sun as it should really um, so I'm pretty happy with this that bed there um, of course we have our next bed and you can see some color poking out from those marigolds um, I spent like five minutes harvesting so far during this video and I mean that's a pretty good turnout and I'll let those like ripen on the countertop um, I have some that you know I actually put to the side over here so those are like the bad ones these are the ones that have been good so far you can see a whole bunch of beans all right on these plants now these definitely took a hard hit when the water was turned off for a little bit but I will say like they didn't suffer as much as I originally thought they would have um, they bounced back pretty quickly I'm just trying to get like look how big these are all right um, I haven't harvested in about a week and all of these yellow beans um, and I see we have some 
black cherry tomatoes over there that are ready. And then even some that I have been leaving for seed saving, right? These pods are pretty dried out. Um, I have had some that I've just been leaving here and I've actually collected quite a few seeds, which was one of my goals this season. But I mean, these green beans are doing really, really well. Um, now I do have tucked up in here, um, I have some marigolds, right? Which, oh my goodness, look at all of those beans. I just kind of like picked this up. Um, yeah, and we have a whole bunch more beans in here. I'll have to come and harvest. But these marigolds are absolutely gorgeous. These are French orange marigolds. I actually planted one plant in the food forest, all right? And then every time that the seed pad dries out like this, right, you can take this off. Let me see if I can do it with one hand here. Um, you just kind of like open this pod. And even doing this, like it smells so fragrant. I love it. All right, and these are all the little marigold seeds. So out of the one plant that I bought for the food forest, I have gotten so many seeds. Um, I'll just come through and kind of like scatter them. I do this in the food forest all the time and we have marigolds growing everywhere. All right, um, these are just absolutely beautiful. I love marigolds. I love the way that they smell. I love growing them with my vegetables. All right, they're supposed to ward off like a really good amount of pests. Um, and they just look really pretty, all right? And they come in all different colors too. Um, some of my favorites are the orange ones. So that's why I have the orange ones. You can see these like tendrils growing on everything. Um, and actually these are not supposed to be pole beans, but I think they like cross pollinated or maybe I got like a wrong seed batch somewhere. Um, but they have just taken over the trellis and I let them. Um, it's been like two or three seasons now and they just overwintered themselves. So I leave it alone. Um, and then I have, some tomatoes i have like three or four of the tomatoes back here um, i think these are all the same variety right you can see some green ones growing right there and then here some nice cherry black cherry tomatoes that are really sweet um, i actually haven't harvested any of these yet so these will be the first ones that i'm harvesting today um, and then my pole beans slash bush beans here on the bottom um and for some reason right even though like there are tons of green beans if i just kind of like go through here and open up the space you can see back there there's some but for some reason they always like to like tower over the bed right so they like come out of the bed and the minute i lift up all of these i usually get tons and tons of beans growing in that like underneath part so i'll come through and harvest there in a minute see how much we can get and then, oh look, more cherry tomatoes, black cherries. Um, I was actually waiting for these ones to ripen, so very excited about those. Um, these ones are starting to turn blush. And then our very first little spoon tomatoes. Guys, I'm really excited about these. It's the first time I've grown currant tomatoes in all my years of growing tomatoes. It's been like a long time, like a, over a decade of growing tomatoes. This is my first time growing spoon tomatoes, so I'm pretty sure that's what spoon tomatoes look like. I did plant them out, um, but they all kind of like just, I forgot to label them. So I'm kind of like in this little jungle space here. All right, kind of stuff is just coming off the trellis. Um, next to that, I have another tomato plant up here loving the sun, all right, with these little flowers on them. Um, it's actually grown through this kale plant, which I'm very surprised about. Um, this is still growing and getting much larger. Um, and then I have a whole nother heap of bush beans and my sunflowers are <laughs> growing through that as well. So these are, I, ooh, and there's like a little moth in there or something. Definitely not my favorite thing to find. Ooh, that got all over me. Um, but these, I believe, are called black. I want to say they're black beauty sunflowers, but I think that's actually the name of tomatoes, not the sunflowers. Um, these are gorgeous. I've grown them a couple of seasons now. I mean, and just look at that. I mean, look at the color on those. And I think they tend to get lighter as they get bigger from what I've noticed. Um, they were originally propped up onto the trellis and they've just kind of like been folding their way down. Um, but if you see that, look at this. And oh no, see, this is why you got to check your vegetables more. That is not good. I came out here two days ago and it was perfectly fine and there's just something, ew, burrowing itself in there. Perfectly good squash and this is like a massive squash too. Look at that. Oh, so disappointing. I just checked it. 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try to like get some of this foliage around um, and out of the way. That way I can check it a little bit more. And then I have another one over here that I'm kind of don't want to pick up because it's gonna like unfold itself, I think. But there's another one in here. Guys, I'm so disappointed. This is like 100% why you need to be walking your garden every single day. I literally just checked it a few days ago. And now there's, I don't even know what that stuff is on the outside of it, but that hole that it just made, definitely not good. So probably won't be able to use that one. Super disappointed about that. Um, but I will say we do have tons of bush beans and stuff. Um, I am gonna come through and just prop this trellis back up. This is probably, you know, why the foliage is um, getting completely covered and I can't see anything. Um, but just like, this is the reason why it's, it's doing that right now. The weight of this um, is just completely taking this trellis down. Um, and then we have another one over here, which is much smaller, but still good. So I will keep my hopes up for this one that nothing gets to it. You can see the difference. Like this one is not completely covered with foliage, um, but that one definitely was much closer to the ground. So something to keep, you know, keep in your mind. Um, make sure you have good aeration and you can see everything in your garden. Um, we have some, let me see if I can find it, some basil in here. I know that there was a few other ones growing through here um at some point and there's some parsley down there somewhere that surprisingly is still um edible it's still doing really well um some swiss chard that's kind of taken over um we have gotten some pest pressure now that it is warming up um, i'm not exactly sure what that is but probably nothing good so i'll take this leaf um off and we can you know get rid of that um, and then you can see some basil back there also i've been making a ton of pesto actually um we have some of this swiss chard you can see it does have some holes in it but for the most part like you can use it around the holes the holes never bothered me um and then oh look we have another little sunflower i don't even know where this came from my goodness um i'm actually really liking having a lot of the flowers in the garden but as you can see we have a whole bunch of flowers squash flowers all right we have been doing really well on the squash flowers the female squash flowers um and actually the male squash flowers but you can see one of the other things that we have a lot of are little baby squashes that never made it all right and this isn't that something got to it all right this is like a shriveled up little squash thing to put in compost you can see some more flowers in there and even some little baby squashes that have started growing. Um, but for every squash that has started growing, we have at least a few of them that have just like wilted, all right, um, and not produced anything. And you guys, that is because we don't have a ton of pollinators out here, all right? We are in the suburbs um, and we just don't have like beehives on this property. We have um, two beehives now on my other property where the food forest is, where eventually my garden will be, but we're in the HOA, right? We're not allowed to have beehives. And just because people like spray their lawns with pesticides and stuff, there's not a ton of pollination, all right? So that is the second thing that we have encountered this month um, that has really set us back. We've had so many flowers and so many um, chances for squash really, but, I have been out here as much as possible, which has not been a lot. Um, I have been out here hand pollinating squash. Um, and as you can see, like the ones that are growing are the ones that I was able to successfully hand pollinate. But a lot of them I didn't get to, right? Because squash plants bloom for such a short amount of time. Um, I will see them in the morning. And if I don't do it like right then and there, by the afternoon, they're already closed up and your chance is gone. So if you have a chance to get pollinators, um, attract pollinators to your garden with flowers, right? Like those sunflowers that I had behind me um, or even put beehives or something definitely go for it because it will save you so much time hand pollinating um, and it's just better for the garden overall right better for nature overall um, oh let's fly or something um, but definitely just you know if you don't want to hand pollinate your vegetables try to attract pollinators to your garden all right so next to our little squat not little actually massive squash area all right and intertwined with basil and swiss chard um we actually have some some tomatoes that just kind of like work their way out here um they're actually i think planted like further back behind this like this one over here is much further in here um but it's just like trying to find the light 
So we have these ones with flowers on them, these ones kind of coming out of the bed. I haven't really tried the trellis set as much as I could have, um, just because of time, but also because like, I just wanna see what they do. I mean, if, if it means that we're gonna have tomatoes like trellising around this space, then, then that's really fine with me. I mean, I know some people want a little bit more tidy, all right, and we have some tomatoes underneath this kale plant with some flowers and some actual tomatoes on them already all right here in the shade um but just to see you know how it goes what nature does i mean and it finds a way like this is really trying to find the light um this over here is doing really well in the shade for some reason even if it's you know behind this kale plant which doesn't get tons of shade or tons of sunlight sorry um it's doing really really well right and it's it's actually not really smaller than the other ones um and we have these two kale plants behind it um and a lot of our parsley here that actually did survive. Um, I've been using this a ton um, and it is coming back. Um, I did have some more lemon balm, but you know, this is what's left of it. So I'm okay with that. And then I actually left, all right? And I know this looks like a hot mess, so don't kill me, but I actually left my, oh no, and I'm kind of like ruining it, but I left my mustard seedlings to dry. All of those little things coming off of the end there right there those are mustard pods so i'm gonna have to at some point in time take all of these inside you know try to get them out of the pods um and that way i can make mustard and i have a whole bunch of them all right like this here they're tiny and it is a ton of work all right which is why you should really value whatever mustard you eat because it oh no and they're like once they um once they get all brittle and dry like that, they are really fragile. So they like drop off a whole bunch, a whole bunch of them just dropped off. So I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm just going to leave it like that until a time I get a chance to take it inside. But all of this, all of that like cane looking material that you see are two giant mustard plants. So I'm going to leave it and see if I can get some mustard. And then we have actually i'm seeing some like little baby oak trees that are trying to grow themselves in my bed um doesn't bother me for right now so i'll just you know leave it alone and then eventually when they get bigger i'll probably transplant them somewhere else so i can grow them out a little bit further i have my parsley all of this was covered in herbs you couldn't even see the soil and now you can see like all of this dead material um that just didn't get watered so not too happy about that but um yeah it was a mistake um some lemon balm here and then all of my oregano did surprisingly well throughout that little patch of drought tons of oregano and it smells so fragrant right next to my um pretty large actually swiss chard and this is doing really really well um and then you can see the wildlife has found itself in my garden a lot more um my compost bin which i've been filling up a ton and the same thing, I have some Mizuna over here that's gone to seed that I know I showed you guys in the last video and I just, I haven't gotten a chance to actually um, go through and undo every single little seed pod. However, I've already done a whole bunch of the Mizuna, so maybe I just um, leave it alone this time around. You can see like what happens. Um, I'm trying to like just, here we go. So, all the seeds start coming out of the little seed pods, little ants. All the seed pods start kind of like opening up on their own that's what happens all the seeds come out of that little pod and then they just end up back in the soil and then we'll have mizuna again all this little baby mizuna are all volunteers those aren't actually weeds they're mizuna so i won't you know won't bother ripping them out um this actually was my um brussels sprout that didn't do too well and um, i got some brussels sprout leaves from it but other than that not so much and in compost it goes along with the other one that i'll get to in a second and then i have my kale doing pretty well as well um you can see my mustard not my mustard my mizuna coming out of there um this was actually arugula i thought it would give me more seeds than it has right you can see some of these little seed pods there but they dried and i don't know if they already fell or maybe they haven't done too much but i've only seen a few of them so We'll see what happens with that. Um, some kale that's been getting some holes in it with some of this damage. I have seen quite a few aphids out here, um, but the, the older kale has done a really good job of surviving. And then my little squash plant that hasn't really done too much, it's not getting as much sun, so I probably will never put it back in this little area again. Although I will say that the house should be 
pretty much done in a few months um, so this might actually be my last season gardening in this garden all right this is um, what started out as my grandmother's backyard and we transformed it into this space um, looking kind of wild right now but I mean this was my you know second garden up here um, since I moved in with Alan since we got married um, and it's been a really good little space it's a tiny space to garden in my new garden will be so much bigger all right so much more space to work with um, which will be a challenge in and of itself but this garden has given us so much food all right so there may not be too many more garden tours in this garden i hope you have enjoyed this one um, thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you are growing this month in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next one bye